Hello everyone, hope you're having the greatest day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss more restaurants featured on Restaurant Impossible and how they are now. So, without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys. Dinner Bell For a season 5 episode, Chef Robert Irvine heads over to the failing Dinner Bell restaurant in Texas. Owned by Tommy and his wife Allison, they opened up the restaurant over 4 years ago having really high hopes. Due to the fact that Tommy had already owned a successful diner in the past, he didn't think this would be any different. At least, for the first 3.5 years, things went very smoothly. So much so that Tommy decided to open up a second restaurant. However, he did get some resistance from his wife who wasn't supportive of the idea of running so many businesses at once, but he went ahead and did it anyway. He really should have listened to his partner since having to run two things at once took a lot of his time and energy. Consequently, not only did the first restaurant start to suffer, but so did Tommy and Allison's relationship. Seven months into the second restaurant's launch, they were forced to close it down which had a huge impact on Tommy's mental health. Going from hopeful to hopeless, the owner's confidence was completely shattered and with the added financial troubles, his future was at risk. Needing the guidance of a professional, the couple call out to Chef Irvine for some much needed help. Upon his arrival, Irvine feels like the restaurant's decor is bland and remarks that the chairs look like they've seen better days. Meeting with Tommy, he discloses that he initially paid $70,000 for the restaurant and lost $75,000 on the second one. Financially speaking, the owners fear that if the restaurant closes down, they'll lose the home for their young son. Asking to taste the food, he thinks that their meatloaf tastes like dog food and expresses that there isn't anything good on the table. Heading into the kitchen, Irvine notices that their food is stored incorrectly, like how there's a bag of chicken sitting in blood. Nasty. Their fridge is covered in mold and Irvine quickly learns that the kitchen hasn't been cleaned in over 6-8 to eight months. Before getting into the renovations, the Restaurant Impossible host meets with the staff and helps Tommy realize that he needs to be a better leader if he wants to succeed. Finally, after deep cleaning the kitchen, revamping the menu, and completely changing the restaurant's decor, Dinner Bell was ready to relaunch. Impressing both owners with the changes made, the restaurant ended up reopening successfully. The customers absolutely loved the new look, and the improved menu was a big hit with the diners. Several months after Irvine left, the staff kept up with the hygiene standards and were doing pretty decent. However, with the rising food costs, the owners decided to reverse the changes made to the menu, which inevitably led to their closure in 2013. Bad move. Cassieville Cafe in yet another Season 5 episode, Robert Irvine is called over to Cassieville Cafe in Cassieville, Illinois. The restaurant is owned by Diane Emery and her daughter Robert Gordon, who purchased it three years prior to the show's taping. Having always dreamed of owning a restaurant, they bought the cafe for $60,000 and spent another $30,000 on renovations and kitchen equipment. Barely ever making much from the start, they're now losing close to $7,000 a month, putting them at risk of closure. Overwhelmed by the business, the owners realize that if nothing changes, Cassieville will close down in around 2-3 to three months. When Irvine finally arrives, he discovers that the restaurant is extremely filthy and has an odd stench. Looking around even further, he notices that they use banquet chairs, which he absolutely hates, and realizes that the smell is coming from their carpets. Meeting with the owners, they reveal that they have no restaurant experience and don't even know the figures of the business. While watching the restaurant in action, Irvine notices that Diane's service leaves much to be desired. He describes her to have as much charm as a brick wall, which we have to admit is nothing but factual. Investigating the kitchen, he notices that they use a household stove and that the general area is filthy. Furious with the staff's lack of care, Irvine shuts down the service and refuses to taste any food after what he saw in the kitchen. Through some discussion with the staff, the Restaurant Impossible host picks up on the fact that there is some animosity between the cooks, Steve and Al. Supposedly, Steve is horribly negative and this type of attitude is seemingly rubbed off on the other staff members. He really only cares about coming in and getting paid. Following what is a really heated argument, Steve was fired since he was only causing issues for the business and another cook named Debbie decided to quit. Ready to move forward, Irvine meets with a designer named Lynn to discuss the restaurant's redesign with a lower budget in mind since he also had to replace the kitchen equipment. Once the renovations were done, Irvine revamped the menu to include dishes like chicken fried steak, sautéed shrimp, applesaw, and more. Considering everything was completed, both Diane and Robin were amazed with the changes made and it was finally time to reopen. On the night of their relaunch, the restaurant filled up with customers who loved the new decor and vowed to come back for more delicious food. Several months after the show aired, the restaurant's customer base shot up and the service had improved drastically. However, in January of 2014, they ended up closing down since they reverted back to their old menu. Today, the building is run by new owners who renamed it to South Main Diner, which has very good reviews. If only they kept up with the menu Irvine made. Soup to Nuts Diner Robert Irvine decided to visit a restaurant called Soup to Nuts Diner in Tavares, Florida for a Season 5 episode. Being 90s inspired, the diner is owned by Sharon Whitmore, who purchased it around 9 years prior to the show's taping. Alongside raising three sons, Whitmore has been running the restaurant for close to a decade on her own, which is very impressive. However, the fact that she works 7 days a week around 100 hours, she considers the diner to be her life, but it's very close to closure. Due to the lack of funds, Whitmore was forced to live with her parents, which is something she never expected to do. 
Not knowing how else to proceed, the desperate owner called out to Chef Irvine, who arrived feeling very unimpressed. Upon entering, the famous chef notices that the entrance is filthy and that the doors need to be cleaned. Meeting with Whitmore and her manager Jeannie, they explain that the business started dropping around 4 years ago and that they're losing close to $10,000 a month. Wanting to test the food, Irvine is completely disappointed with the spread of meals in front of him, which are entirely bland. Later on, one of the customers calls Irvine over to complain about seeing bugs on her table and around where she was seated. Horrified, the Restaurant Impossible host brands Soup to Nuts as one of the dirtiest diners he's ever seen. Inspecting the kitchen, he finds a moldy fridge, tons of cobwebs, equipment caked in grease, and raw meat being stored improperly. Calling a staff meeting, Chef Irvine puts forward the idea that Debbie should be the one to take charge since she's worked at the restaurant the longest. Following some discussion, Irvine seems unhappy with the staff who are taking their pay without carrying out their jobs properly. Forcing everyone to apologize to Whitmore and help clean the filthy kitchen, one employee named Andrew starts acting very disrespectful and Irvine fires him immediately. After the restaurant was remodeled, the menu changed, and the kitchen deep cleaned, the diner was finally ready to reopen. While the relaunch was successful, several months later, they continued having poor hygienic standards and were forced to close down in May of 2013. Sweet Tea's Restaurant and Catering As a last quick entry, we're going to discuss a restaurant Robert Irvine visited called Sweet Tea's Restaurant and Catering. On his way to the restaurant, Irvine finds it very challenging to locate the building since there are no signs to point you in its direction. After a while of struggling, the Restaurant Impossible host makes it inside and meets with the owners Dana and David Cohen. They express that they're losing close to $9,000 a month, but David isn't sure why since the food and service is supposedly good. While observing the service, it comes to Irvine's attention that the diners aren't pleased with the restaurant's clutter and lack of lighting. Testing the food, he brands it as awful, especially the chicken and waffles, and he learns that the waiting staff are undertrained. Supposedly, the staff are incapable of cooking in high volumes for a busy service and are bad at maintaining stock levels, which means they're often running to the grocery store for supplies. Later meeting with a designer named Tanya, who thinks the decor is bland, Irvine admits that he wants to give the dining room a comfy southern vibe. To make the eventual relaunch go smoothly, Irvine teaches the kitchen staff how to make new southern dishes using fresh ingredients. Finally, after providing the staff with the necessary skills, Irvine revamped the decor and employed an advertising company to help with the restaurant's reputation. Eventually, Chef Irvine reveals the new dining room to the owners who love the updated look and cozy fireplace. Upon Sweet Tea's relaunch, their patrons seem to be in love with the improved decor and new menu. Even though they did have a boost in business after the show aired, they struggled to repay their debts. This resulted in their inevitable closure in August of 2014. How unfortunate. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one guys.